hello welcome to my youtube channel today i want to discuss some cultural shocks that i experienced as a nigerian in south korea this is going to be very interesting stay tuned so full disclosure i'm not saying all these things in order to make korea a bad country or the best country or that nigeria is the best country or a bad country I'm going to be stating this things from a personal point of view in order to educate people that have interest to come live in Korea or study in Korea in the future. So let's just laugh about them. And as we're laughing, let's try to learn one or two things. So the first cultural shock for me when I first arrived in Korea was that um, greeting people in Korea is not a norm. Okay, let me explain. In Nigeria, even if you don't know people, you are not familiar with them, you can exchange greetings like, ah, good morning, good afternoon, ah, oh, bye. You know, friends of friends, you can just meet them once and just exchange pleasantries and stuff like that. All these things are not normal in South Korea. I, I mean, from my own perspective, when I first arrived, the first day that I stepped out, I met some people on the road, you know, when you see elderly, especially when they are looking at you, you get this kind of conviction that you have to say hello to them, right? Upon saying hello, they will just ignore you. That's how it is in Korea. Oh. Nobody said anybody, Papa. <laughs> Another shocking thing for me was seeing men on makeup in Korea. It's totally normal. Foundation, powder, eyeliner, uh mascara men also use it here and it's like norm and it was really really <laughs> a culture shock for me because from where i come from if you wear makeup you are probably a gay gay or you are a model or both or something else you know so it was really shocking for me another thing is the pali pali culture in korea like everything moves so fast pali pali means quick quick or fast fast so whatever you do, you cannot act like a snail here in Korea. You just have to do everything fast, fast. So everything works according to schedule. If you are told that something will start from 9 and it will end at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, just know that that's how it is. It would even probably end earlier than the stipulated time because everything will just move fast. And then if you're working on the road too, everybody's working fast. If you're working at your job in the office, you have to do everything fast, fast. There is no time for slow, slow things. But you know, as Nigerians now, we take our time with things. We procrastinate a lot. Me as a person, I have that as one of my bad habits. So it was really a big shock for me when I got here. Like the system is totally different. So I had to like adjust over a period of time okay another thing is the language barrier and how koreans assume that even if they don't understand you you have to understand them like they generally believe that as a foreigner if they speak korean to you know how know how you get it i don't know where they, they got that notion from and that thing has been making lots of foreigners to suffer in korea because whenever you go out and you need help or they need help and they face you and they start speaking korean you get lost and you're like, how will you even say that you don't understand Korean in the first place? They would have said like three paragraphs of sentences and you would just be there still looking at, okay, what was this saying? What did he say first? You know, it's kind of like shocking for me. They, they feel like, oh, okay, oh, you can speak Korean or something like that. I don't know how, but they generally assume that foreigners can speak Korean. Another culture shock for me was that even after COVID-19, okay, I got to Korea when the coronavirus like broke out in 2020, February, and we were like the last set of people that were able to come in before the lockdown. So normally now we were wearing face masks, right? But when it was lifted in 2023, early last year, I realized that Koreans still wear face masks on the norm. Because the, there is yellow dust in the atmosphere and then they like to, I don't know, is it like hiding their face or something like that? So it was like, I would be like, how are you breathing inside this max? I'm just happy that it's already like lifted up and we don't have to, we are not mandated to wear the face masks again. But it's totally normal for uh, people to wear face masks in Korea. Also celebrities, celebrities wear face masks a lot in order to hide their face. And I also met, I've made some friends in the past that always wear it whenever, whenever they have like bad makeup day or bad hair day, face cap and face masks. 
that's the right combo to hide your face whenever you are not feeling good about yourself or something like that so it's shocking for me because me i want to flaunt my face now you know <laughs> oh, oh, oh 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 i remember another one beauty standard or beauty obsession okay so in korea there's a beauty standard that people have to keep up with it's not only female both male and female like you cannot gain fat you cannot have fat face when i mean fat face you have uh, fat here or too much fat here or uh, i don't know just fat face so koreans usually like um go on diet diet is like very normal here they can starve and go on diet just so they can keep their weight or they can they can come down and you know <laughs> maintain a certain kilogram of weight which is very weird to me because me and diet we are like opposites so some of these standards are slim figure small face slim eyelid slim face jaw pale skin small lips thin eye nose straight brows double eyelid big eyes and so on and if you watch korean movies very well i think there was a movie where they talk about um uh, the uh, advent of double eyelid surgery which is like the fundamental surgeries yeah people gift themselves that surgery because they want to achieve double eyelids and it's part of the beauty standard in korea this is the first thing that i'm supposed to have mentioned and that's safety Korea is said to be one of the uh, few countries with very low crime rates. Although that very low also has its um, reservations because nowadays there have been higher crime happening in Korea. And when we say safety, we are talking about ability to walk in the midnight with no fear of any uh, harm coming to you. And then leaving your things in restaurants to go to the restroom you can leave your phone, your wallet on uh, the table, even your tablet in a cafe and go to the restroom to ease yourself. On getting back, you find your things there. So nowadays, Korea is uh, battling with uh, uh, call fishing, which is when they assume the identity of other people in order to steal from them. So, so far, it's still one of the safest places to be in the whole world. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about Nigeria. You know, you have to be at a lot every time in Nigeria. So it was shocking for me to know that even at 3 a.m. in the night, I can go out and go do my business and nothing will happen to me. You know, it was a cultural shock for me because I was always like, I was always standing guard, like always in my bag, always in my pores. So after some times, I learned to like relax so that. <laughs> I can enjoy the safety in Korea. Hey, God, this is very, very important. Food. Food in Korea was shocking to me because from the movies, I used to watch K-drama from home very well. And from the movies, you know how the table food now, very scintillating and appealing, very aesthetic. Eh? You will see the food and you will start getting hungry. That was the way I felt before I got to Korea. But upon getting to Korea and tasting the food, or um, more, I won't mind. <laughs> it's not like they are not delicious, but they are so far, far, far in difference compared to the food that I eat at home. Am I going to compare Amala to Bibimbap? Ah, or um, more. <laughs> So yeah, most of the soup here are watery, you know, we don't eat watery soup like that. If it's not pepper soup at home, I beg, wait till I go chop, we will get water reach that level. So in Korea, most of the food are water-based and um, the ones that are not water-based are usually very weird in taste. Oh, and the meat, pork is the main source of protein in Korea. So it will be very uh sometimes it's very hard to go out i want to eat in a restaurant and um tell them oh i don't eat pork they tell you they don't have anything without pork but these days that there are many vegetarians in korea they are beginning to open up options for vegetarians in restaurants but being vegetarian is not what i am i just don't eat pork 
it's different and oftentimes i've had to like deal with that situation especially when i'm in a public gathering and they ask for my food option i would just have to tell them that i'm a vegetarian and they end up bringing vegetables to me because i said i'm a vegetarian now so it's a very big issue it was very shocking for me to know that oh beef is expensive in korea so that's why pork is like uh, the main protein because it's much more cheap and um yeah it's a cultural shock for me like i just often like resort to eating fish outside which is not bad too by the way so yeah so that's everything that i prepared this is a very uh detailed list and i know that there are more things and if i foreigner in korea i feel like there are more shocking things that i didn't mention you can comment them in the box below and i as i've said these are just things that are observed from my perspective there are things that shocked me when they happened to me so yeah just learn from it i'm forward thank you for watching bye